PickerRepair.com. We're all in this together. Hi, Ed here at Pick and Repair. Purpose of this video is to talk about how to select an alternator for your application in your Power Stroke 6 liter. So, what's the issue? The issue is that most of these trucks come with just a single alternator. That's a 110 amp alternator. Some of them come with dual alternators. It's 140 up top and 120 down low. So, recognize though that those are just marketing numbers. The 110 amps that, uh, all that you've got, does it do 110 amps? Well, yeah, at speed when cold. Does that upper 140 amp all letter do 140 amps? Yeah, at speed when cold. Well, what do these all letters do at cold idle? That's what we care about. So the 110 amp all letter, it does 75 amps at cold idle. The 140 amp all letter, it does 85 amps at cold idle. Now, the 120 amp all letter down low, it does about 78 or so amps at cold idle. But the point is that if you've got a dual all in your truck just anyway, don't be thinking that both those all are energized at the same time right after the truck starts. That's just not the case. The ECM, the engine control module, dynamically decides. It says, hey, uh, which one seems good today? And it just picks which of those two all to energize. Less than incredible. In fact, this is so less than incredible that there's a technical service bulletin out by Ford that talks about how to convert from dual to single all so that doesn't tell you a story. Kind of don't know what does. But regardless, what's the problem? You've got a 25 amp draw at full operating temperature, just to keep the motor spinning, okay? No headlights, no fog lights, no blower motor on high, no heated seats, no accessories running, no radio, nothing. So if your stock all under to 65 amps at, at uh, hot idle and 75 amps at cold idle, why is there a problem? It's because that's not when the problem shows up. The problem shows up right after the truck starts. So right after the truck starts, what you've got is, is a situation where the glow plugs are still on. So you've got a 230 amp draw for a period of time right after the truck starts. The question is how long does that amperage draw stay? So at zero degrees and colder, your glow plugs stay running for two minutes after ignition. At 30 degrees, they stay running for about a minute and 15 seconds. At 50 degrees, all in Fahrenheit, by the way. At 50 degrees, they stay running for about 45 seconds. At 90 degrees, we don't care. At 90 degrees, they stay, second, they stay running for about a second, eh, right? But then even after they shut off, there's still a spot of 65 amp draw until 130 degree oil. And that's the issue. Now, adding some insult to injury, let's say you only drive the truck like five, 10 miles and then shut it off. Do the batteries have a chance to fully recover? The answer is no. And so ultimately you're driving around with batteries at something less than a full state of charge. This is less than incredible. So what all litter do you buy? Well, arguably the biggest one you can afford, right? But the more of that 230 amp draw you can cover, the better off you're gonna be. And we carry about 15 different all litter options for this truck. We can help you navigate the waters. Check out FickleRepair.com and um, you can go through the options. The three most popular all litters that we carry are DC Power's 190 amp alt litter, Lisa Neville's 230 amp alt litter, which arguably is the best value, and then DC Power's 270 amp alt litter, which is wicked awesome and incredible, but it's money. So those are the three that most folks concentrate on. The nice thing about the 190 amp alt litter is you do not have to, you do not, it does not necessitate going ahead and adding to your cabling at all. But the other options, it does. So keep that in mind, okay? So the 190 amp alt litter does 165 amps at uh, cold idle. The 230 amp alt litter, it does 170 amps at cold idle. The 270 amp alt litter, it does about 220 amps at cold idle. So you're like, okay. So right after I start the truck, it's offsetting the 230 amp draw by that much. So you say, hmm, Ed, the 165 amps at cold idle number, that sounds a lot like the 170 amps number at uh, cold idle, doesn't it? Sure does. The issue is that the 190 amp alt litter, it makes its power in part by using a small diameter pulley. The 230 amp alt litter that does 170 amps at cold idle, it makes that juice without any reduction in pulley size whatsoever. So that's pretty interesting. Also further to that, note that any rotating assembly that spins faster, which is exactly what happens with a smaller diameter pulley. Obviously that rotating assembly isn't gonna last as long. 
That said, a lot of complexities here. Lee Snavill only puts a one-year warranty on their alt litter versus DC Power puts a two-year warranty on theirs. Hmm. Interesting. Even after the warranty is up, DC Power will still take care of you for the wholesale cost of the parts and no labor charge. Also very, very cool. So, kind of interesting. Now, in the 270 amp alt litter's case, that alt litter does 200 and 220 amps of cold idle, but um, also through a small diameter pulley. Um, but that one actually can be recased to work with like a 6-7 power stroke. DC Power, last we checked at least, they got 150 bucks for that. And they'll even refresh the internals while they have it. Could be the last alt litter to buy. Certainly that's a very sweet alt litter, but it's at a premium. But quality costs, I get it. So which one to pick? I don't know. How do you use your truck? Are there more complexities? Sadly, yeah. So you're probably running lead acid batteries. Most of us are. Uh, the issue with lead acid batteries is that lead acid batteries can be charged up to a 15.7 voltage rate and they'll be okay. You won't overcharge them, you won't outgas them. The AGM batteries, however, you really shouldn't charge them at that kind of rate. In fact, if you look at the, the fine print, what you'll see is that most of those batteries don't like to be charged anything over 14.7 volts. Well, and um, outside of Odyssey, actually, I'm not aware of any battery manufacturer that offers a solution out there that suggests that it can be charged any over 14.5 volts. So, hmm. so if you're running lead acid batteries today and you have no visions of grandeur of running AGM style batteries, then maybe the 190 amp alt litter is good enough for you. But if you want to reserve the right to run AGM batteries in the future, probably you should be looking at the 230 or the 270, if I were guessing. Now, are there bigger than, than those options? There are. Do you need them? Probably not. But if you're running a competition sound system, you know, then yeah, then it, it, it makes sense. Now, in car stereo land, what if you're running, say, I don't know, 2,000 watt sub? Well, I doubt you're listening to talk radio if, you're listening, if you have a 2,000 watt sub, right? So we whip out the proverbial iPhone here, a uh, little plug on Apple, and um, just go ahead and do, do, do the math here. We say 2,000 watts divided by, we'll call it 13.5 volts, is 148 amps. And you're like, oh my gosh. Well, but listen, you're not running, you're not listening to test tones out of your car stereo. So it's not pulling 140 amp, 148 amps anyway, not all the time. But if you listen to hip hop or something like that, you can imagine like a, call it a 50% duty cycle. So what, 50%? So 2000 amp um, car stereo, you probably want to budget another 74 amps for all things car audio and you'd be just fine. Now, outside of that, what about other loads you have on the truck? What about a plow? What's the issue? The issue is that alternators don't actually respond immediately to an amperage request. There's a voltage regulator inside there. Well, the issue with the voltage regulator is it's regulating voltage, right? It's not covering these amperes as they come out. If you've got an elongated draw, like the glow plugs, well then yeah, available system voltage is gonna drop and what's gonna happen, the alternator's gonna be like, oh my gosh, my system voltage is lower. Let me go ahead and offset that. And so it works to do that. But if you've got a plow, you pick up the plow, yeah, your battery voltage drops, but the, most alternators take about, eh, on the order of 1.8 seconds or so to go ahead and respond to an event. But what happens after 1.8 seconds? The plow's already on. Interesting. So now what do you want that alternator to do? Recharge the batteries. So there are a lot of complexities in this and there's even more details we can go into. In fact, if you want more information on batteries and snow plowing in general, check out our other video on that. But for now, recognize that the stock alternator is woefully too small. The sweet spot for failure is in 120 and 160,000 miles. You can have up to 190 amp alternator without just being absolutely forced to augment what Ford gave us for cabling. And it's a little complicated. So following this video, if you've got questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. If you don't have questions and you just think, oh, I'm going to order this, <laughs> then great. We'd love to have your business. But recognize the goal is never to sell you anything. It's just to help you out. So we carry about 15 different alternators for your truck, but we carry about everything you can possibly buy for your truck. We rep for essentially everybody. So it puts us in kind of an even playing field. All we want to do is help you. All we want to do is make sure that you're not having problems and that your uh, camping trip with your family goes without incident and that life can be truly wonderful and enjoyable for you. So I hope this helps somebody.
Pigmentpro.com. We're all in this together.